Today, we present The Second Mile, a drama inspired by a teaching spoken in the Sermon on the Mount and set down in the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, a teaching from the greatest life ever lived. of Galilee, these are troublesome times. For the Galileans, a people of great pride in their heritage, grow more and more resentful under the occupation of Caesar's armies. So it is not so strange that on this day, in what seems to be a peaceful household in the town of Bethsaida, the woman of the house comes upon an object which startles her. And with great fear, she calls out to her son, Daniel! Daniel! What is the meaning of this? What is it, Mother? This. This dagger hidden on the shelf. Oh. Daniel, what does it mean? It can mean only one thing, Mother. That we are getting ready. One day you will see such an uprising as this country has never seen before. God have mercy on us all. Remember what happened to your father. There's nothing I remember better. The day they brought him home. Dead. Because he had fought the tyranny of the Roman invaders. I'll remember that day forever. Remembering is not enough. We must do something. Even if it means we must die in the process. My son, you think you are very brave because you were able to say that. Let me tell you that sometimes it takes greater courage to live with hardship than to avoid it. A whole generation of us is growing up who won't live with it. As far as I'm concerned, every Roman soldier I meet is my father's murderer. Daniel, you cannot talk that way. Would you rather I were as cowardly as my Uncle Raphael? He is so frightened of being related to us that he refuses to recognize us. Your uncle was very willing to give us money to tide us over this bad time. Give us money. It's like a bribe. As though he was saying to us, take the money, but stay away from here. I can't have Daniel seen in my house or in my shop for fear the Romans will discover that I am related to you. But I do not want his bribes, and I do not want his charity. Oh, my son, how easy it is to be proud. But I pray that someday you will learn differently. You will learn that there is great value in humility and forbearance. The only day I am interested in is the day we rise up and kill them all. Someone may have heard. I don't care if they did. One moment, please. One moment. Yes? Is there anything I can do for you? Is this the house of the widow Leah? I am she. What is it you wish? I have been asked to give you this parchment. Parchment? Who is it from? It explains itself. I was asked merely to hand it to you. Now I must go. Here. Thank you. Well, what is it? Parchment scroll. One moment, I will see. Well, mother, what is it? And you thought your uncle was avoiding her. Listen to this. And so, my dear Leah, you may be sure that I realize your plight. And if you will have the boy come to see me in the late afternoon tomorrow, I will talk with him and do what I can for him. With my affection to you, sister-in-law, and to your son. Yes. But he didn't sign his name because he was afraid that the parchment might fall into Roman hands. No, I do not think I would like to work for a coward. You will not talk that way about him, Daniel. Your uncle is a good man. He worked hard. And if he fears the Romans, it is because they are to be feared. What does a man accomplish by spilling his own blood? What did your father accomplish? I, I, I'm sorry, Mother. I know what this does to you. <laughs> I will go and see him tomorrow, Mother. Believe me. I will go. And, Daniel, you'd better wash your face. But, Mother, I've already washed it twice. I'm so anxious that you make a good impression on your uncle. This is so important to us. The only reason I'm going there is for your sake. I will never be able to respect him as a man. 
But I will bite my tongue and work hard in order that you do not have to work. But don't ever make the mistake of thinking that I want to do this. If only you would come to understand one thing that your father never understood. But then he had never seen the master. If you he had heard him teach, things might have been different. No one would have changed my father. He was too strong and too proud and too brave. I like to think that the master would have changed him. Would have been able to show him that there is a way to overcome hatred and tyranny. Not through bloodshed, but through love. Not by resisting what we are asked to do, but by doing more than we are asked to do. That is the master's way. Yes, my son, I hope you will be as wise a man than your father was. No one could have been wiser than he was. It is time, my son, to put on your cloak and start out to see your uncle. And if you could just think about what I have heard the master teach. I do not wish to think about it, mother. Then here, let me help you put on your cloak. I have washed it for you and it is fresh and clean because I want you to look your best. And you know how strict your uncle is about everything, especially about being prompt. You are to go from here straight to his place. I know, mother. Then go. And may God go with you, my son. May he make your uncle well disposed to you. Well, Naaman, what do you think? What should I do? Well, if you, if I were not your friend, I wouldn't even want to answer it's not that I don't want to help my nephew, Daniel, but after what happened to his father, if the Romans find out that I'm his uncle, they might put me out of business. They they might even send me to prison. What if this boy, Daniel, were to change his name? So no one knew he's your nephew. Oh, the boy is as stubborn as his father was and proud. He wouldn't do that. Even when I offer him and his mother money, they turn it back to me. They won't have charity, they say. So how can I help them? Wait. You say you sent a message asking the boy to be here this afternoon. Yes, I felt I had to do that much. But after sending it, I began to have qualms and worries. I feel perhaps the boy will solve the whole problem for you. What do you mean? Well, he might say something. It would give you a chance to say that he's not right for the job. Or better still, he might come late. So you could say you must insist on a boy who is prompt. Well, there are all sorts of ways to let a boy talk himself out of a job. Neiman, this boy is my own nephew. And yet, the wrong one, hmm, nephew? Oh, what a terrible thing to do to one's own flesh and blood. Nephew, whoever said that a coward's life was pleasant or easy? all dressed up in your holiday cloak on a weekday. I'm going to see my Uncle Raphael. So don't detain me because I might get a job. Really? Well, in that case, go on. Will I see you later? Of course. I should be back before nightfall. What's the matter, Jonathan? What's going on over there? I don't know. What's so cute? Come on, Daniel. I don't have the time. Oh, come on, Daniel. It can't take long. All right. Can you see anything, Daniel? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, there's a Roman soldier in the middle of the crowd. Oh, yes. Daniel, look. Look at that. Making that little boy carry his shield. I suppose it's a big joke to the Roman. It's the Roman law. Any soldier can make any of us carry his shield for one mile. And there's nothing we can do about it. That's the kind of thing we'll make them pay for one day. But it isn't going to help that little boy now. Oh, there might be a way. What can we do? I have an idea. Roman! If you're so tough and strong, why can't you carry your own shield? Quiet, can you? Don't want to get into trouble that way. Well, not if we can get the rest of the crowd to shout at him. I've noticed you can make those Roman soldiers back down sometimes if you make fun of them. Someday we'll not only carry your shield, we'll carry you on it. Do you think this boy is too small to carry my shield, do you? 
Well, you may be right. Oh, Here, boy, give it back to me. That's right. Oh, good work, Jonathan. I don't like the look on that Remus face, but he let the boy go. That's what counts. Now, uh, don't any of you get the idea that I'm going to carry this myself. Oh, no. The law says anyone can be commanded to carry the shield of a Roman soldier. And I'm here to see that the law is carried out. <laughs> Especially on a hot day. So, uh, let's see who's going to be the next to oblige me. And this time it won't be a young lad. It'll be an older one. Say, um, you, for instance. Daniel, he's pointing at you. Me. But I've got to be at my uncle's place by noon, not me. You. Dressed up like you were a prince of Israel. <laughs> but I can't. You'll be surprised how well you can when I get done coaxing you. Say, with the butt of my spear. <laughs> I've got to go to see my uncle. It's important. Very important. Is that so? Please, sir. I'll take his place. But then you go and I'll carry your shield for you. Well, well. Noble sacrifice from friend to friend, eh? Very good. But not good enough. Why not? He's the one I picked and he's the one it shall be. Here, my fine young prince, take my shield. Take it, I said. <laughs> You stop me, Roman dog! Oh, a spirited rebel, eh? Wow, wow. Dog. <laughs> Two feet. There, now. What do you say to that? Don't I get another one for calling you a Roman? You'll get the right end of the spear for your filthy hide if I hear another word out of you. Take up that shield. Take it up. Please, Daniel, do it. I'll kill you if you don't. Do it. For your mother's sake. All right, Jonathan. That's better. Now start walking. In that direction. <laughs> I figure you've only gone about half a mile. Don't be so impatient. Look, I could run the rest of the way. Could you? You mean you could run all the way to headquarters? That's where I'm going. Wait, how far is that? A mile and a half. The law says I only have to carry your shield a mile. Oh, you could volunteer to carry it the rest of the way. And if you ran, you might be free earlier than if we walked the rest of the mile. But that isn't fair. A mile is a mile. Oh, I see. Well, if you can't appreciate a bargain when you see one, I'll do this my own way. Wait here. Wait. Why? See that inn? That's where I'm going. To get me a cool drink. Oh, please, sir. You'll be delaying me. I might still get to my uncle's on time if you don't... I'm going to go. You're quoting the law to me. A mile, you said. <laughs> well, let's stick to the law. We'll go a mile. But the law doesn't say I can't take my time. And right now, it's a cool drink I want. And that's just what I'm going to get. Wait here. Oh, I please. Don't wait. And don't try to run off because I know your face well by this time. I'll be able to identify you anywhere. I know. Good. I'll be back. Don't you move. Oh. Sir, what's going on? Why is that crowd gathering? Only one person could gather such a group of followers... The master. Yes, boy. The master. Look at him. Look well. For you'll want to remember this day the rest of your life. Look, sir, the Lord doesn't say I have to talk to Romans. I see. Doing your mile and resenting every moment of it. Is that it? Anyone who wears the uniform you do should know better than ask a question like that. You know, lad, I don't blame you for resenting me. You don't? But I say this to you. As long as you're here, you might listen to him. He teaches so many wonderful things. I've heard about him many times, but I've never seen him. Then look, his face. Have you ever seen such a face before? And his eyes. 
The understanding of the world and all its people is in those eyes. Yes, I can see. Perhaps I can understand now what my mother means about him. What are you talking that way about him for? You're a woman. He doesn't preach to you. No one wants to understand. My boy, he preaches to all who listen, even Roman. And what is more, when my servant was sick, the master did not ask if he was a Roman. He cured him because he was a man, a human being. He cured your servant? When all of us had given up hope for him. Really? Yes, my boy. So listen to him. For he has a great deal of wisdom and... Wait. Sir? Boy, he's looking at you. Me? Why? I don't know. But he is looking at you. And he's going to speak to you, I believe. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Why does he say that to me? Listen, boy, he will explain. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Did I hear right? Did he say to go two miles instead of one? Yes, lad. Go with him the second mile, the master said. That's what my mother always says. Give more than is required. Your mother must be a good woman. Oh, she is, sir. I know I've heard the master say the same thing. Somehow when I hear him say it, 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 it means more. It, it means... Sorry, sir. I must go now. But why, boy? There comes the soldier. This is his shield. I'd better go. It's my duty. Yes, you must do what the law says. But remember, lad, the master spoke to you today. And that is an honor you will cherish the rest of your life. And he spoke of your spirit, of overcoming hatred, of conquering revenge, of wanting deep inside to do more than is required. Remember that. Always. Remember, too, that because of him, you spoke to a Roman today and, and discovered that even a Roman can be a friend. get pretty cloudy and black. It's going to rain soon. Don't you think I know that? See that lightning? It will rain and we're on the outskirts of the town. And if we are? If I get caught in the rain, my coat will be wet and dirty. I can't go to see my uncle that way. He's a very finicky man. He might deny me the job because of something like this. That's no worry of mine. You keep walking. I'll teach you to quote the law to me. Keep moving. Don't you even have a little consideration for what this might mean to my mother and me? Have you never gone hungry? Now look, boy, I'm getting sick of your words. Just keep quiet and keep walking. Oh, there comes the rain now. If I get my helmet wet, I'll have to spend a better part of tomorrow polishing it. Oh, then wouldn't we both be better off if we could turn back and take shelter at some house till it stops? There's no need for that because I'll take your cloak to cover me. My cloak? Oh, sir, please. No. She herself would say so. Here, sir. Take it. Now you're making sense. Oh, sir. Do you have something to say? Yes, I have something to say. Here. Take my coat, too. Your coat? What for? 
because the master said so. My mother said so. She said one can be free that way. Take it. Take it, sir. I figure your miles about up now. I'll carry my shield the rest of the way to headquarters myself. You can go see your uncle now. This late hour and looking this way, my sandals and feet caked with mud, my coat and cloak soaking wet and dirty. Wouldn't do any good to see him now. Well, don't trouble me with your tale of woe. Just give me my shield. You go back to town. Tell me, how much further is it to your camp? About another mile. Why? I will go the rest of the way with you. I will go the second mile. The second... Are you out of your head? Well, didn't you say before that I could volunteer without breaking the law? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm volunteering to carry it the rest of the way. As you say. But don't forget you volunteered. <laughs> You can go back now. It's only a short distance. I said I'd carry it the rest of the way. And I will keep my word. First, you fight like a demon not to carry it at all. And then you decide to carry it two miles. I wish I could understand you. You don't have to understand me. Just say it's something I wanted to do. Because he said so. He? Who is... Get off the road, boy. If you don't want to be spattered with mud worse than you are now. Doesn't make any difference. Get out of the way. You're going to save your neck. That's a Roman chariot. to run you down and kill you. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Salute, boy. That's a centurion, an officer. Salute. Uh, yes, sir. Say, lad, haven't I seen you before? I don't think so, sir. Back there in the town where the master was speaking? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. You were the officer who spoke to me. Yes. Now, what are you doing here, and why are you still carrying that shield? Oh, please, sir. He volunteered to carry it. I know that you soldiers impose on the population, that you threaten them with all kinds of punishment if they don't carry your shields further than the prescribed mile. That's true in this case. You know what'll happen. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, it isn't true, sir. Uh, ask him. Is it true, boy, is it? Now, tell him, please. Tell him. Well? No, sir, it's not true. I volunteered on my own. Thank you, boy. All right, soldier, you may go now. But carry your own shield the rest of the way. I want the boy to remain here. Yes, sir. Boy, let me have the shield. And uh, here's your coat and cloak back. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much, boy. Now, lad, come here. Yes, sir. Your coat and your cloak. And you did volunteer to go the second mile. What of it, sir? So what you heard him teach took effect. I'm glad, for your sake. It was a good thing you did. A thing calling for a great deal of real courage. Courage? If I had courage, I would have got to see my uncle no matter what. After all, it would mean so much to my mother. Your uncle, your mother, I don't understand. It doesn't make any difference now. Look at me. Well, I'm going back to town, if I'm free. Wait, I... I take you back in my chariot, if you'd let me. If I let you? That's the first time I ever heard a Roman ask and not command. Well, then? All right, Roman. I'll ride back with you. <laughs> Oh, you see, Raphael, most of the problems in life have a way of taking care of themselves. 
Your nephew doesn't arrive here, so you don't have to turn him away without a job. I almost wish he had come. At least I could have given him some money. Pride or no, I could have found some way to make him take it. Well, now it's no longer your fault. Raphael, look, a Roman chariot. And it's stopping right here in front of your place. Romans, they've come for me. And it's that boy's fault. I knew one day he'd get me into trouble. What'll I do? What can you do now? Uh, come in. How do you do? Which one of you is Raphael? I... I am Raphael. But, sir, I, I, I've done nothing wrong, nothing. Is this boy your nephew? Uh, this boy? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I might as well admit it. Admit it? It is something of which you should be extremely proud. What did you say, sir? He's a very fine boy, and from what he told me on the way here, I should think you would be delighted to find a place for him. Sir, do you mean you wouldn't mind if I gave him a job? Mind? I would most heartily recommend it. Did you hear that, Daniel? He recommends it. He said it would be all right. Isn't that wonderful? Well, you will start at once and for a fine wage. Did you hear him, Daniel? Well, Daniel... Have you nothing to say? So many thoughts rushing through my mind, I cannot speak all of them. But I, I think the strongest one is that my mother will not have to work anymore. And I will be able to provide her with many things we have been forced to go without since my father died. Yes, Uncle, I think that is the most important thing. Is it, boy? It must be, sir. I know that right now the first thing I want to do is rush home and tell her. I wanted to know, and I'm sure she will be as happy as I am. If you would really make her happy, my boy, tell her that you saw him and heard him teach. Yes, sir. And even more important, that you found within yourself the courage to follow his teaching. I think she would want to know that more than anything else. I suppose you doubt what we say. But let me say, sir, it is something the master thought that shows us the difference between acting out of fear and acting out of courage, between facing the world with love and facing it with hatred, by doing what is required of us, not grudgingly, but happily, and doing even more than is required. Right, lad? Yes, sir. And maybe the proof of how right the Master's teaching is is that you, a Roman, and I, a Galilean, can agree about him. You know, sir, I think my mother will be happy to hear about that, too. <laughs> 